Welcome to Electron Online, and now we're going to try and understand how we can calculate the intensity of an interference pattern at any point along the screen. For example, let's say that we have a central maximum right here, and this line right here represents the intensity of the light as it interferes with each other at different angles, of course. In some cases, the interference will be destructive. In other cases, the interference will be constructive, depending upon the extra path length. If the extra distance traveled by one wave coming from the one slit compared to the wave coming from the other slit, when those two differ in path length by half a wavelength, they'll be 180 degrees out of phase, they will destructively interfere, you'll see a dark spot there. And if the extra distance travels the full wavelength or two wavelengths, you'll see a bright spot like you do here or a bright spot like you do here for two wavelengths because the extra path length puts it back into phase. Uh, with the other wavelength, and so if it's an integer number of extra wavelengths traveled, the two will come together in phase, and you'll see a bright spot will be constructive interference. But how do you find the intensity somewhere between full constructive and full destructive interference? Well, it turns out that the intensity is in actuality equal to the, what we call the absolute value of the pointing vector. In other words, the intensity is proportional to the electric field strength of the electromagnetic wave at any point in time. What does that really mean? Well, go back to the basics of electromagnetic radiation. If light, just like any other electromagnetic radiation, is traveling through space at the speed of light, while it's traveling through space, we have what we call electric field oscillations in one direction and magnetic field oscillations in the other direction. So when a wave travels through space, the electric field is moving like this, the magnetic field is moving like this, and so the wave travels through space like that. Of course, a lot faster than what I just showed you, at 186,000 miles per second or 300,000 kilometers per second. But yet there is this continuous fluctuation in the electric field and the magnetic field. And so the intensity when two waves come together all depend on the relative phase of the electric field oscillations relative to each other. The energy is, of course, half stored in the electric field oscillations and half stored in the magnetic field oscillations, but we can calculate it in terms of the electric field oscillations alone because there's a relationship between electric field and magnetic field. We know that the magnetic field strength is equal to E divided by the speed of light, and so we can actually calculate it in terms of electric field oscillations alone. So a little review here. Let me find my pen. Um, the pointing vector is 1 over the permeability of free space times the product, the cross product, between the electric field and the magnetic field oscillations because they're perpendicular to each other. So the absolute value of that can be written as 1 over mu sub naught, the permeability of free space, times the magnitude of E times the magnitude of B. And since B can be written as E over C, we can write it like this. So we have 1 over uh, E over C times Z, which is E squared over C. And we could then say that the average value of that, because really what we're interested in is the average value of the pointing vector, is equal to the maximum amplitude of the electric field oscillations divided by the square root of 2. That gives you the average. Since it's squared, we have to square it. So we end up getting this as the average value of the pointing vector, which is the average value of the intensity of the waves when they come together. And so that will be in terms of the maximum oscillation of the electric fields. And so since we know that C, is equal to 1 over the square root of the permeability of free space, which is mu sub naught, times the permittivity of free space. If we use that relationship, we can actually simplify the expression to make it look like that. That's my favorite way of expressing the magnitude of the pointing vector, which is also, therefore, the intensity. Since the intensity is equal to the average value of the pointing vector, the intensity is equal to this. And notice that the intensity then becomes a function of the amplitude of the electric field oscillations times, of course, epsilon sub naught and C, which are constants. And therefore, we can say that the intensity of the, of the electric field or the intensity of light or any electromagnetic radiation is simply proportional to the strength of the electric field oscillation squared. So now when two waves come together, we want to know the phase difference between the electric field oscillations. That's what determines the intensity when the two waves come together. Of course, it'll be a function of the path length, which will be a function of the angle and the function of the extra distance traveled, which will then have to convert in terms of how much fraction or how big a fraction of the wavelength that actually is. So here I have some simple graphical examples to try and figure out how we calculate the intensity when two waves come together when it's not fully destructive interference or fully constructive interference. All right, so let's say that one wave comes in and the other wave travels an extra distance of one twelfth of a wavelength. 
Well, one twelfth of a wavelength is equal to a phase difference of 30 degrees or a phase difference of pi divided by 6 radians. If that's the case, you can see that there is an angle difference, a phase difference between the electric field oscillations. So the total electric field, when those two waves come together, can simply be be figured out by doing a vector addition. These are like phasers, and one is 30 degrees away from the other, and so you can simply vectorally add them together, and this will then be the total electric field strength when the two waves come together. So you can see, when there's only a phase difference of 30 degrees, the total is almost equal to double the total amount of each individually. Not a lot of difference, so they're almost completely in phase, and so there's almost complete constructive interference. But when the phase difference is bigger, the phase difference is now a quarter of a wavelength, you can see that the total electric field strength is now not nearly as large, so this would be E total. And you can see then the phase difference is more significant and that results in partial destructive interference. Our third example is where the extra distance traveled is a full half a wavelength. Full half a wavelength, I don't know the proper way of saying that. So let's say it's a half wavelength. We already know when two waves come together and the extra distance traveled by one compared to the other is a half a wavelength, they'll be completely out of phase and there'll be destructive interference. Here you can graphically see why that's the case. In one case, the electric field oscillations will be in one direction. For the other field, the electric field oscillations will be 180 degrees in the opposite direction. When you add these two vectors together, what do you get? E total, total, is therefore equal to zero. They cancel each other out. Why do they cancel each other out? Well, if the extra distance travels a half a wavelength, the electric field oscillations as the two waves meet, one will be exactly 180 degrees out of phase with the other. When you add them together, they cancel each other out and there's zero intensity at that point. Remember, the intensity is proportional to the electric field oscillation squared, but if you add them together when two waves come together, and they're in opposite directions, they cancel each other out. If they cancel each other out, you'll have zero intensity. What we're going to do here, however, though, is we want to find out what the intensity is, for example, at this location as a function of theta. And notice that if it's not exactly at the dark spot or not exactly at the bright spot, somewhere in between, we want to find that partial intensity. And that partial intensity can be found by knowing the phase angle, like in this case 30 degrees, or in this case 90 degrees, in such a way that we can vectorally add up the electric fields of the two waves. And when we add up the electric field from that, we should be able to calculate the intensity because the intensity, after all, can be set equal to that. And this here, E max, is going to be the E total that we calculate when we put the electric fields of both waves together vectorially, depending upon the phase angle. So at least I want you to have kind of a, a feel for how to do this. I will show you in future videos exactly how to calculate it. So we'll need a few more videos to actually figure out what this actually all means, how to come up with the, with the equations, and then I'll show you some examples how to actually calculate the intensity at various angles so that we can say the intensity as a function of theta or the intensity, intensity as a function of phi can actually be calculated exactly at any location along the screen. And that's ultimately our objective. So if you're interested, keep watching. We'll have some other great videos for you.